Hey, Mr. Meisters here, and in this video I'm going to talk about solving polynomial inequalities. I gotta keep looking back here, I don't know why. Solving polynomial inequalities using sign charts. So, in a previous video I did, I used a graphical method, so we looked at graphing it. But what if we don't want to use graphing, we, got, we can use something called a sign charts. Let's take a look. So, the first thing I want to go over with you is that there are three, like, steps. Okay, this is kind of the steps, alright? The steps of doing a polynomial inequality, we want to factor it. So we've got to have it in factored form, and we know that from the previous video. Uh, we're going to find what we call the critical values, and then we're going to use a sign chart, and then we're going to put it in interval notation. Okay, so uh, let's take a quadratic here for my first example. So what I'm, I'm going to do step one, which is factor. So I'm going to factor this. It's going to be 2x, x. And that's going to give me 2x minus 3 plus 2, right? That'll factor that way, all right? Because it's going to be 4. Okay, yep, that's a good factor. Okay, so now since we have a factor, we're going to do the critical values. Now, the critical values are, if you remember my graphical approach, our critical values are x-intercepts. So it's the values that make x equal <coughs> I'm squeaking. <laughs> that make x equal to 0. So all we're going to do is set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. All right, so we've got 2x minus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. And we're going to solve each of these. All right, so these are our critical values. Now, our critical values, we're going to do a number. We're going to use a number line, and this is basically what I call a sign chart, but we're basically using a number line, and I'll show you where the signs come from. Um, so we're going to plot these on a number line. Negative 2, 0, 3 halves. And what we're going to do on this number line is we're going to put the values in between these two critical values. So these critical values here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually make it an open circle. All right. And it's an open circle because it's less than, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a value in these intervals. Now I've got this interval here, this interval here, and out here. Those are my three intervals in this case. And I'm going to pick a value in between any of these numbers, and I'm going to plug that value in. Now some videos and some other teachers you'll see, they plug this value in the original. I like to plug it into the factored form because it's a little easier to deal with. All you need to figure out is whether this is going to give you a positive result or a negative result. Okay, so let's take a look. If I plug 0 in here, I'm going to get negative 3. So this whole thing is a negative. And if I plug 0 in here, this gives me a positive 2, which is positive. I don't know if you can see that or in the video. And I know that a negative times a positive is a negative. So that means this part right here is negative. So I'm just going to put a negative sign right there. And I'm going to use a better, I'll be right back. Now I'm right back, let's see if my red pen works here. Now I'm going to try it again. I'm going to do it again out here for like negative 3. Negative 3, now you can just do a little bit of numerical analysis here, right? This is going to be a big negative number plus a negative number is going to also be negative. Negative 3 is bigger than 2, that's also going to be a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So out here, this is positive. Now I'll do it again for numbers like something bigger than 3 halves, 2. Okay, so I plug in 2 in here. That's going to give me 2 is 4 minus 3 is a positive. This is also positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So really, you don't need to know what that number is. You just need to know whether it's positive or negative. This is a sign chart. Okay, this is the sign. Positive, negative, positive. Now, we we'll zone in on the one that we want. We want this to be less than zero. Less than zero are the negatives. So this right here, between negative two and three halves, is my interval that makes this true. So my answer for this one is going to be negative two to three halves. And this is in interval notation. All right, okay, I got two more examples for you, so I'll be right back with my next one.
All right, here we go with number two. This is example number two. Oh, I didn't write two here. Okay, so here I've got a cubic. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can uh, do grouping method and factor this. If I don't, if I can't do that, uh, then I have to find a factor, or I have to find a factor, use synthetic division to bring it down to a quadratic, and then factor that. But we're gonna use grouping because I think that's gonna work in this case. All right, so we're gonna group the first two here and the second two. The greatest common factor here is x and, sorry, x squared. And the greatest common factor here is a negative 1. So then I get x squared minus 1 times x plus 2. So my grouping actually worked here. All right, so then my critical values are going to be x plus or minus 1, and x equals negative 2, right? Because this one I solved for x, right? I said each of these equal to 0, and I solved for x, and I'm going to get negative 1 and positive 1, and here I'm going to get negative 2. So now I'm going to use my sign chart again. All right, so let's make our number line. This time we're going to have negative 2, negative 1, and 1. And these are going to be open circles again, okay? So again, we're going to test values in each of these intervals. Let's start out here with negative 3. So again, I'm going to just plug it in here because I like to do it in factored form. So negative 3 is going to give me a positive, right? 9 plus 1. So this is going to be positive times a negative because negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So positive times a negative is a negative. So this interval is negative. I'm going to have to pick a number in here, so let's pick negative 1.5. All right, negative 1.5 in here is going to give me a positive, right, because this is bigger, it's going to be bigger than this one. And then this is also going to give me a positive. So a positive times a positive is positive. All right, let's try the next one. Let's pick zero. So zero is going to give me a negative times a positive, which is negative. And then finally, let's pick like two. 2 is going to give me a positive times a positive, which is a positive. Now, it turns out that this goes negative, positive, negative, positive, and they actually do alternate for polynomials um, that have distinct, fa distinct factors, okay? Uh, but we're going to see an example the next one that does not do that. So, uh, which ones do we want? We want this to be greater than 0, right? So, greater than 0 are positive ones. So these are my two intervals. So I'm going to write this in interval notation. Negative 2 to negative 1 union 2 to infinity. All right, so that's another one with solving polynomial quantities. I'll give you one more. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back here with our last example. Um, example 3. I keep forgetting to change that, guys. All right, notice here that this one is already in factored form. So if it's already in factored form, we're just going to go ahead and find our critical values. So our critical value is going to give us x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals 1. We're going to go ahead and draw our number line or a sign chart. And these, this time, these time, we are going closed circles, right? Because it's a less than or equal to. So let's go ahead and test these values out. Um, let's start with a negative 4. Negative 4 will give me a negative. Here, this is always going to be positive, right? Because a negative, we're going to square, it's going to be positive. So this is going to be positive. And this is going to be a negative. So a negative times a positive times a negative is a positive. Okay? Let's try negative 1 here. Negative 1 is going to give me a negative, a positive, and another negative. So this comes out to be positive. Notice here, again, this is the example that has non-alternating intervals. Okay, let's try 1 half, so 0.5. So 1 half is going to give me a positive here. This is always going to be positive. And this is going to give me a negative, because 0.5 is smaller than 1, so it's negative. All right, and then we have 
2. 2 is going to be a positive, positive, positive. Positive times a positive times a positive. It is a positive. And so we are looking for the less than or equal to 0, so negative values. So that's going to be this interval here. So it's going to be 0, bracket, 1, because it's the, that closed interval. And this is our answer for this inequality. Okay, so solving polynomial inequalities, follow the steps, that's it, boom, I'm out of here, bye.